Holy, holy, holy. <clears throat> Please be seated. <clears throat> I'd like to welcome everyone this morning. We thank you for coming and being in our uh, assembly with us today, especially our visitors. We want to just say to you, we're honored that you have decided to be with us and worship on this Lord's Day. As a matter of fact, it's been a while since we've done. Let's all just stand and shake hands with your neighbor around you, behind you, in front of you. All right, we'll go ahead and be seated now if you wish, and uh, if you met a new friend, then that's a great day, and you can continue your friendship following our services uh, this morning. Uh, some announcements we have for the congregation here. Don't forget that next Sunday on June the 3rd, we'll be uh, advancing our classes for Sunday school and Wednesday night Bible classes. That means your child will be promoted to the next grade level that he'll be attending in school. So don't forget about that. If you have any questions about that, I, I don't know if that one did going out or not, but <laughs> I, there's, a, there's no story preachers used to tell about a child that was misbehaving. His daddy got up with him, taking him out, and he knew what was going to happen. And he started yelling and screaming, saying, please, please, everybody pray for me. But, uh, but anyways, you know, that's part of being a parent. By the way, did I tell you I'm going to be a grandparent? <laughs> I, I told the class Wednesday night I wanted to share some new news with them, and I forgot it. Uh, I'm going to have a grandson. So we, all, we are all excited about that. 
and then the next one will be a granddaughter. So <laughs> we're, we're excited about it. Um, our sound uh, uh, equipment is going to be updated on the 14th through the 15th. On the 16th, on Saturday, there's going to be a training class. Anyone who'd be interested in helping to uh, work and operate our audio system, our sound system, if you would be interested in doing that, then please attend this uh, meeting. You can see Tony more about that, uh, about how to operate our new system. We express our sympathy to the Wisdom family and Mary, Mariana. Uh, wisdom. Her father passed away. His name was Omer Dotson. Funeral will be tomorrow in Tompkinsville at Strobe Funeral Home at 1 o'clock. Visitation starts today at 10 o'clock. Another announcement I've been asked to make is uh, for the food sign-up list for work camp week. We always have uh, lunch we provide for our workers and we need uh, volunteers who will be willing to help us out with that. There is a list out in the foyer if you would like to volunteer for that. One final announcement I'll make, and that is uh, Stonecrest Devotional, or not Stonecrest, White House Assisted Living Devotional is today uh, at 2 o'clock at the White House facility. Uh, I'm in need of some volunteers to lead prayer. If you can come and help us out for that, I sure would appreciate it very, very much. Uh, this morning, leading us in our singing, Jason Draper. At the appropriate time, we'll be led in prayer by, uh, by Dwayne Cothran, and the fellow over here dressed very uh, quietly, uh, yet patriotically, uh, Randy Brauner is going to be leading us in our time of communion with the Lord. Uh, let's all now bow in prayer as Bobby uh, Bransford leads us in this shepherd's prayer. Let us bow. Most gracious Heavenly Father, I want to thank you once again for another beautiful Lord's Day. You truly bless us with, Father. Thank you for all the many blessings of this life. Father, I want to ask you at this time to continue to bless the people that have lost loved ones and the armed forces, Father, that uh, lost, gave their lives, Heavenly Father, to save us, Father, and help our freedoms continue to be as far as a country and a nation. Father, continue to bless their families and help them, Father, at this time of heartache and pain. Father, be with the ones who have been mentioned. They're sick, Father. They're having different uh, illnesses. Bless them, Father, and be your divine will. Help them to recover and rejoin us back in their normal walks of life. Father, be with the ones who lost loved ones recently. Continue to bless them and be with them, Father. Help us today, Heavenly Father, to go through this lesson and may we take what Brother Jerry tells us today with us and apply it to our lives and let us be the shining example and the Christian lights we need to be. And Father, if there's anyone here today that needs to claim your word, Father, and give their lives to thee or need to return home, Father, I pray that something will be said or done that will cause them to do so. It's in your Son's most holy name we ask and pray. Amen. Our song before our time in communion will be Alas and Did My Savior Bleed. <clears throat> Alas and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die. Would he evoke that sacred death for such a
This weekend, in my personal opinion, is one of the most important days that Americans have set aside as a holiday. It's a time to remember and honor the thousands of Americans that have laid down their lives for our freedoms. The freedom that we enjoy this very moment together here without fear of persecutions. There will be many parades and services to honor these fallen heroes, and they are all very much deserved. And we should honor this day and respect it for what it is. And even though it's one, one day a year, we seem to make a big day out of it, to which we should. And even though their sacrifices were the ultimate sacrifice, it still pales in comparison to the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. The first century Christians, when they met upon the first day of the week, they gathered around this table and they broke bread and they partake of the cup to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. In Luke chapter 22, in verse 19, where Jesus is talking about breaking the bread, he finishes that verse and he says, This do in remembrance of me. I would ask each one of us as we partake of this bread and other cup that we would focus on that sacrifice that he made for us because without it, we would have no hope of an eternal life in heaven with him. Let us all pray together. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for this beautiful day that you have blessed us with. Father, we thank you for the blessing that you have given us to gather around your table once again. Father, I pray that you would please bless this bread, the representation of Jesus' precious, sinless body that was spit upon and beaten and crucified to pay the price of our sins. Father, I pray as we partake of this that we focus solely on that. In his name I pray. Amen.
Our Father in heaven, we would ask that you please bless this cup, the representation of Jesus' precious blood that he willingly shed on the cross for our sins. These things we ask in his name. Amen. Having completed the Lord's Supper, now is the time here that we take up a collection from our members to meet the financial needs of this congregation. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the many ways you provide for us to earn a living. We're thankful for this time that we have to give back a part of that to meet the needs of this congregation. We pray that each person would give according to their ability. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. For those who will be attending We Church, if you want to exit at this time as we sing Jesus Loves Me. <clears throat> Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yeah. Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. 
Our song before our prayer will be, I need thee every hour. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. Let us pray. O Almighty God, O Holy Father, creator of the universe and all good and wonderful things, we humbly come to thee, Lord, asking for thy blessing, for we truly need thee always. Father, we'd like to pray for this congregation and ask that you bless them, that you bless our deacons and our elders, our song leaders, our teachers, the many that are sick in this congregation, and, and we pray for uh, your support and, and uh, us to help them to get them through their illness. We pray for those who've lost loved ones. We pray for uh, the many elderly here who, who make it a point to be here to worship thee and, and show us um, good leadership by this. We pray, Heavenly Father, for our life groups and our youth group and pray for their safe return home today. Father, at this time our nation is celebrating Memorial Day and the fallen soldiers and who have fought for our freedom and we pray for their families and, and let 
pray that they know that we appreciate the great sacrifices they've made. We pray also for the great sacrifice of your son Jesus through him that we'll have eternal life in your plan of salvation. And without this, we, could not, we would not be worthy to even say your name. Father, we'd like to pray for our government and its leaders. Pray that they may look to thee for wisdom in making decisions to lead this country. We pray for uh, the many lost and, and hopeless throughout the world and, and pray that we can do what we can to lead them to thee. Lord, we pray for our brothers in Christ throughout the world who are being persecuted and killed and tortured and pray for your protection for them. Lord, we, we pray for the many widows and orphans and pray that we may do what we can to help them. Father, we pray that in everything that we do, that we do this to glorify thee and that it's pleasing in thee. And thy will be done, not ours, for it's in Christ's most precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Our song before our lesson today will be Sing to Me of Heaven. If it's convenient, please stand. <clears throat> Sing to me of heaven. Sing my song of peace. From the foes that find me, it will bring release. Burdens will be lifted that our pressing soul shall Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly dream of its golden glory, of its earthly gleam. Sing to me when shadows of the evening fall. Sing to me of heaven's sweetest song. Please remain standing for the scripture reading. <clears throat> the reading this morning is from the book of John, uh, chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. 
I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear even more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches, whoever abides in me, and I in him. He it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. You may be seated. Good morning again. I want to just say again how grateful we are, all that are here. And we want to just take this opportunity to say to our visitors, thank you for coming and, and hope you'll have a good Memorial Day weekend. Um, if you have your Bible now, open it with me to the book of John, the 15th chapter of John, chapter 15. Tim just read a moment ago. We're going to go back and look at that uh, passage and some other verses that correspond and go with it as well. Um, I really think that the Lord wants us to be people who are joyful people, don't you? I don't think the Lord came to this earth so that we would be miserable. As a matter of fact, that's not what he said. He said, I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly, John 10 and verse 10. The Lord wants us to have uh, not only years of life, he wants to, us to have life in our years. And the Lord wants us to be people who are joyful. You know, we have in our Declaration of Independence the pursuit of happiness. And, uh, and in a sense, that's something we as Americans are very uh, aware of and we're very keen on. And we realize as we stop this weekend to honor those who have sacrificed their lives for our freedom, that this is a part of that pursuit of happiness. But the truth is, it, it can only be found in Jesus Christ. It's the Lord that says that. Look down at verse 11 in the passage that we're talking about here now. In John chapter 15, if you look down at verse 11, he says, I told you this, these things that your joy may uh, remain in you and that your joy might be full. The Lord wants us to be people who are joyful. But here's the question. Are you that kind of person? Are you a joyful person? Are you someone that... that people would look at and say, that's somebody who has, who has and knows and possesses the secret of joy. You know, I think the Lord was a man of joy as well. I think it, uh, he would, if he were here today, and of course he is in spirit, right? But if the Lord were here today, I think he would really, really enjoy the services we've had thus far. He would have really enjoyed the songs that Jason selected for us today to sing. He would have enjoyed the praise and the adoration and the glory that we have given the Father so far. If the Lord were here today, he might say to us, Look, folks, some of you look like you need to get with it because you're not very happy looking. You're, you're not smiling very much. And, and he would say to us, Why would you not want to be people full of joy? Why would you not be someone who would smile if you are God's child? And so that's what we're talking about here. Now, Jesus says in John 15 and verse 11, I've told you these things. Now, what are these things he's talking about? Well, what Tim just read in John chapter 15, verse 1 through 5, he talks about that, is, that uh, he is the true vine and we are the branches. And if we abide in him, we'll have that life. We'll have that joy. And what the Lord's trying to say is, You'll not find joy in wealth. Uh, all of us know examples of people who have plenty of money and a lot more, and yet they don't have the joy that Jesus talks about here because they're not a part of Christ and abiding in Him. We also know that the Lord's not saying here that you can find joy in, in fame. Uh, and the accolades of the world are fleeting. One day you're on top, and the next day you're on the bottom. With the world, you know, you can be a hero one day and a zero the next day. That's just the way it is. You will not find happiness in those kinds of things. Elvis Presley had it all. Marilyn Monroe had it all. Uh, John Belushi had it all. And yet they didn't have the joy that Jesus promises us if we will live for him. So what I want to talk about today is the secret of joy. We're talking about in this series of lessons 
uh, connected together, being all that we can be and being all that God wants us to be. And when we are all that we can be and when we're all that God wants us to be, we'll find that secret of joy. So he starts out here by talking about being a vine. Now, as Christians and as people who are God's people, some of us, we're not experiencing that joy, are we? For us, it's, it's something we find elusive. It's something that we find maybe difficult to find. And for some of us, it's something we feel like we've never found. So how do you go about finding it? Well, the first thing I want to talk about here is the place of the branch. I want you to see the place of the branch in the vine. Um, and in this passage, when Jesus talks about we are the branch and he is the vine, I want you to see two things. Number one, when he talks about this, he's talking about our absolute dependency on him. He's talking about us being absolutely dependent on the Lord. That's what he's talking about here. Notice what he says in verse 5. He says, without me, you can do nothing. Now, we don't like that. We don't like being told we can't do anything without this or that. We like to be people who are independent. We like to be people who think that we can, we can have whatever we want on our own. And, and one of the great things, I guess, uh, that we as Americans find ourselves, what we call American ingenuity. We can pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. And I don't have anything against making America great again. I think that's one of the things we ought to do. I just think it ought to be done in a different way. I think making America great again is not dependent on some political party. Making America great again ought to be saying making America Christian again. I think that's what's happened to us as a nation. We have lost our Christian uh, guidance, our compass, our roots, and, and, and we need to be brought back to the Lord. And we need to realize that without Him, we can do nothing. That means I am totally, completely absolutely dependent upon the Lord. Without Him, I am zero. As a matter of fact, without Him, I am less than zero. I am zero with the edges knocked off. That's what I am. I am completely dependent upon the Lord. Now, before you go away and you say, well, how in the world can you say that's a secret of joy? I want you to connect the dots with me as we work our way through this, and you'll see how that helps us in our joy. Because if we're completely dependent on Him, thank God and praise the Lord, I'm not dependent on myself. Amen? So, so that's, that's one of the things. The second thing I want to talk about here is that this also tells us about our security. Now, let me just say something here because I might get in trouble with some folks uh, in my fellowship here because they'll misunderstand what I say or they'll take what I say and twist it and make it where it's misunderstandable. Truth. Oftentimes it's misunderstood and becomes false doctrine. Much, much of false doctrine is not the opposite of truth. It's the misapplication or the misunderstanding of truth. Those of you in my class on Wednesday night, we're studying about the Holy Spirit. We're going to get more into detail and more deep about that as we go through this session on the Holy Spirit. But what we'll discover is, is that what you find about a lot of false doctrine is that it does have an element of truth. Now, the same thing is true in security. Now, oftentimes what happens is that we, we respond or we react to a statement made that we know that's not correct, and we go too far the other way. So there are those who teach the doctrine of eternal security. Well, we know that's not what the Bible teaches. But we go over here so far as to say there is no security at all. And that's not true either. If this one's false, that one's false as well. The truth is in the middle. We have security. We don't have eternal security, but we have security. Why? You say, well, Jerry, what, how does that tie in with this being a branch and the vine? Well, a branch will survive as long as the vine is alive, right? If the vine dies, the branch will die. Are there any chances of the Lord dying? No. Are there any chances of that happening? Absolutely not. But as long as we are branches and we are connected to the vine, and we're faithful to the vine, and we are rooted in with the vine, we're secure. 
Not because of our own. That's not what we're talking about. Not because of our own effort, but because the vine is supplying here, you see. That's the security that we can have. Again, that ties in with this idea of having joy. And so uh, we need to understand, first of all, there is the dependency we have, and then there is the security that we have as well. If my faith is in Christ, if my life is rooted in Christ, if I'm a vine in the branch, then that vine supplies the life and I will live as well because he will never die. Now, here's the second thing I want to talk about. Not only the place of the vine, but I want you to see the peacefulness of the branch. The peacefulness of the branch. Now, I want to have a conversation, if I can, with one of the branches. I know you think, boy, you've been out in the sun too long. There is scientific evidence that says that if you talk to your plants, they are healthy or more healthy. Now, if you see me out in my garden, it looks like I'm having an argument because one of my plants ain't doing what it ought to be doing. But let's, let's just pretend now we're having a conversation with one of the branches. And I go up and I say to the one of the branches, I say, how are you doing today, branch? And he says, well, I'm doing great. But he says, I can tell you humans are not doing so well. And I asked him, why do you say that? He said, because I see a lot of you having uh, mental breakdowns. I see a lot of you having anxiety in your life and worry and frustration. And I see a lot of you who just got a lot of drama and a lot of trauma in your life. And, and you're just, you just don't seem to me like you're doing all that well. And I say to the branch, well, branch, what about you? Where do you get your peacefulness? How is it that you can maintain the peace that you have? And he says, well, the reason why I have this peace and the why I'm someone who is full of joy is because unlike you humans, I've learned to boil all my concerns down to one concern. And I've learned to boil all my commitments down to one commitment. And I'm only concerned about that. I'm not concerned about five things, two things. I'm only concerned about one thing. And my one concern is, is abiding in the vine. And as long as I abide in the vine, I'm fine. I'll be okay. Well, I say to the vine, how is that true? And he says, well, because as long as I'm in the vine, the vine's going to supply to me all that I need. Come springtime, I'm looking to have some leaves and some buds. And I'm not so focused on that. I'm not saying, man, I've got to do all I can to get these leaves and these buds because the vine supplies those things for me. And pretty soon I have leaves and I'll have these buds. And as the summer goes along and it starts getting really hot, I start to get thirsty. And I get a little wilted. And I don't say, oh me, I've got to have something to drink. I've got to find some shade somewhere. I just rely on the vine. And through the vine and the power of the vine, the source of the vine, he supplies me with all the water I need. He takes care of all my needs. So you see, I only have to focus on one thing, and that is to abide in the vine. For as long as I do, all my needs will be supplied. Now you see, friends, that's the way life is supposed to be for us as Christians. I know that may seem like an oversimplification, but the truth is that we as believers in Jesus Christ, we go through these trials, we have these heartaches, we have these troubles, and we have all these different circumstances that go on in our lives. But if we are in Jesus Christ, if we are connected to the vine, there are no circumstances that can take your joy away from you. There's nothing that can happen in your life that can cause you to have no joy. Because whatever we need, he will supply. Whatever your, your issue is, if you trust in him, and if you're connected to him, if you're plugged into him, he is the source of unlimited power. He is the fount of every blessing. He is the well that never goes dry. He is the light of the world, and Jesus will supply all our needs. You don't have to worry about what you're going to wear. You don't have to worry about your food. The Lord says, I'll take care of that stuff. Just stay connected with me. And that's, the, that's where we've got to be. We've got to have one concern. That one concern is to
to be connected to the vine. And when that happens, we'll have the peacefulness of the branch because we'll be in the place where the branch is. And then the third thing I want you to see here is the productivity of the branch. The productivity of the branch. Now look down at verse 8. He says here in the King James, Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Question, how do you know you're abiding in the vine? How do you know that you're living the life of John 15 as a branch? How do you know that? How do you know you're living for the Lord day by day? Simple. You're living a life that is bearing fruit. That's how you know. If you are bearing fruit, you know you're in the vine. Now, what's the fruit? That's the big debate that's going on in religious world. What's the fruit? Well, we know one of the fruit is what's called the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. There, Paul writes about the fruit of the Spirit, and he says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, temperance, goodness, meekness, and faithfulness. Now, are those things characteristic of your life? You have a life of love and joy and peace, a life that consummated in faithfulness? You see, the problem with a lot of believers is they've gone back to Egypt. They've gone back and they've detached themselves from the vine. They're now living under the power of the flesh and not under the power of the spirit. And a branch cannot survive, it cannot have fruit when it does that. 95%, believe it or not, 95% of believers never talk to anybody about their soul. you believe that? 95% of the believers never talk to anybody about their soul. The whole, they're Christian for 50, 60 years. I can't believe you never talk to anybody. No wonder you don't bear fruit. They're not bearing fruit because they're not abiding in the vine. A branch doesn't have to try to bear fruit. The branch doesn't have to work at bearing fruit because it is all supplied by the vine. And friends, that's the picture of Jesus Christ. When we're walking in Him, when we're believing in Him, when we're trusting in Him, when we're obeying Him, when we're abiding in His Word, when we're doing all these things as a branch that we're supposed to do, the Bible says that's the fruit. And the result of that will be love and joy and peace and long-suffering and meekness and temperance and faithfulness. And when people see that in your life, they're going to respond. They're going to want to know why do you have that in your life that you have. And you can say, I abide in the vine. So you see, that's the productivity of being a part of the vine. Here's the fourth thing, and that is the purpose of the branch. Look at what he says in verse 8 again. He says, this is the way my Father is glorified. Now, what that says is the branch has one purpose. You don't have five, you don't have four, you don't have two, you have only one purpose. I don't care if you're a plumber, I don't care if you are a farmer, I don't care if you're a businessman, I don't care if you're a housewife. I, it, doesn't matter, it doesn't matter who you are, your job, your purpose, one only, and that is to glorify the Father. Why have you and I been saved? Why does the Lord wash our sins away? Why did he send Jesus Christ to die for you? You say, oh, because I'm so lovable. No, no, that's not it. I know you think you're lovable. You had not seen lovable until you see this new grandson. It's not because you're lovable. It's not because I'm lovable. Why did God save us? It's because he loves us, not because of we're lovable, but also that we might bring glory to his name. You and I are trophies, if you will, of his grace. That's what we are. And when we live our lives as saved people, we glorify God in that. That's how that's done. That's the way it works. And the Bible says that be wise and shine as brightness of the firmament as the stars forever and ever. And we'll give glory to God because we're sinners who are saved by His grace. One purpose, 
not two, not four, one. That is to glorify God. As parents, you are to glorify God. As a husband and wife, in your marriage, glorify God. Young people, in your date life, glorify God. In your school life, glorify God. God, whatever your walk is, wherever you find yourself in life, the one purpose you have is to glorify God. Now that's why Jesus says, if a man does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and he withers. And there's so many people who live withered Christian lives uh, and they no longer have joy because they're not walking in obedience to the Lord. Today, I have good news because you can be restored in that joy that you've lost. Look at what Jesus says. What he says here, every branch that does not bear fruit, he cuts away. But he also says every branch that's not bringing glory to the Father, he says the gardener will purge that branch. He'll cleanse that branch. He'll cut away the dead leaves. He'll trim it up, and it looks like he's killing it. It looks like he's hurting it. It looks like maybe he's damaging it, but he's not. He is really blessing it. He's not hurting it at all. Because out of that work, out of that cutting, out of that trimming, out of that cleansing, comes the maximum of fruit. Now, it is true for us as well. God allows tragedy to come into our lives. God allows challenges. He allows trouble. He allows difficulty to come into your life. And you want to say, God, why is this happening? Or maybe you want to say, why, God, why are you allowing this heartache to come to me? I, I, I have a preacher friend who preaches down in Dixon, Tennessee, and I, I got an email this morning. He preaches for the Walnut Street Church down in Dixon. And I just found out this morning his 38-year-old son, who has children of his own, was killed this weekend in a car wreck. The funeral is going to be tomorrow at the Jefferson Avenue Church in Cookville, Tennessee. A, a tragedy. You know, and, and we say, why do, we, why do these things have to happen? Why do good people, why do people like us have to have these sorrows that come into our life? And we say, God, I, I don't understand these circumstances. When all the time God and his love is using these difficulties and he's purging and he's taking away the access and he's, and he's doing all that he can so that we'll glorify God and we'll focus on God. You know, some of the things that happen to us in life is because we've allowed that thing, whatever it is, if it's your, if it's your spouse or if it's some loved one or if it's some job or some career, sometimes you know what happens? God takes those things out because he wants to be first in your life. He doesn't want anything between you and him. And sometimes those things have to be removed so that we see God more clearly. And we're able to bear fruit, you see. And we're able to glorify him. That's, that's what it's all about. God wants every one of us today to, to live in ways that we've only dreamed of. And so many of us here today, our, our lives are void of joy the true joy that God promises oh we, we have trinkets you know we have things maybe that uh, will substitute for a little while but we really don't have that joy and it, it's so sad when I see people out here who, who are living lives full of, of anxiety and worry and fret and, and all that and I don't hear the joy that's supposed to be there as well the secret of joy. It's abiding in the vine. And when we abide in the vine, we become dependent on him. And you know that's good news. Because I don't have to I don't have to worry about trying to produce my own joy because it comes from the Lord. And I know he's faithful. And I know he will come true through his promise. This morning, maybe there's someone today here who's not abiding in the Lord. Maybe someone here today who needs to come to Christ. Make Him your one purpose. Make Him your one commitment. Make Him your one focus. And abide in the vine. And you'll receive the blessing 
of joy that you seek and want in your life. Maybe this morning there's someone who needs to come who is a Christian, whose life has been filled with fret and care, and maybe you're going through some struggles like I described a minute ago, and, and those are challenging your joy and your peace. And you want to come this morning and say, Brother, I, I just need for the family here to pray for me, to pray for me that my faith can be strengthened so that I can be more focused on God and the Lord and just abide and receive his peace. Whatever your need is, we invite you to come as we stand and sing. Our closing song will be America the Beautiful. <clears throat>
please bow. Dear Heavenly Father, I would like to thank you for this day. Thank you for all the many blessings you've given us. Thank you for another beautiful Lord's Day and help us to come out here and hear another portion of your word. Please be with all the sick and all the ones that have lost loved ones. Please be with our military and be with us now as we go our separate ways and help us turn next point in time. In Jesus' name, amen.